Hi, I'm Abhinav Kushraj, and I'm a product lead for BigQuery ML. Hello, everyone. My name is Candice Chen. I am the product manager for BigQuery at Google Cloud. Today, we're going to talk about BigQuery ML. Since we launched BigQuery ML in 2018, we have come a long way. Lots of great adoption from customers of all sizes, be it large enterprise customers with complex data needs, or small startups, or young companies, or even individual uh, data professionals. And we've been able to see the new and innovative ways they've been using this, and it has just blown our mind. Today's session, we're going to talk about all the new stuff that we're going to bring to BigQuery ML, all the new powerful capabilities that we're introducing to make it even more powerful. It has always been our mission to make BigQuery ML the easiest way to unlock powerful ML capabilities so that anyone can be a data scientist. And so first, I will start with a brief overview of what is BigQuery ML and then show you all the cool goodies that we're launching this year. And then in the end, we'll see a wonderful customer demo that Candice is going to show us where unstructured data and structured data comes together to solve real customer pain points. So let's go ahead. A typical ML workflow is where an organization is spending a lot of time to bring their data from transaction systems or traditional legacy systems by doing ETL and investing a lot of time and energy and doing that work so that they have a single place to do analytics, in this case, BigQuery. And once you have it over there, it's great. You can run all kinds of analytics if it's BI. But the moment you want to do AI and ML, oh boy, there are lots of challenges. The first thing you have to do is take the data out. After putting in all that effort, now you have to take this data out, which means you're losing data governance. You're going to lose, uh, 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 you have to build new data pipelines to build consistency from the old and the new source. It just becomes much harder. Another problem is you have to train these models and you have to figure out what infrastructure you need, whether you need a large set of Kubernetes environment and whatnot, or you have to uh, hire skilled professionals, people who know data science and Python and R and all of that. So that's another problem, infrastructure and skill set. And finally, another infrastructure problem is where do you deploy this model? You have to deploy this model and have the right scale and infrastructure so it can deliver the final value at deployment time. And these are the problems that BigQuery ML solves. It makes it easy to manage data. It makes it easy to not have to deal with infrastructure. And it makes it easy to not have to deploy anywhere. It can be done right inside BigQuery for uh, batch prediction. And the way it does it is this. First step, we just come and train a model by writing the simple SQL query, create or replace model, and you point to the data set that's already inside BigQuery. You've already brought, done all the work to bring the data. Why take it out again? Run, train the model right inside BigQuery. BigQuery has tremendous uh, scale capability and compute capability for storage and compute that you put to work when you train this model. So whether it's a data set with 1,000 rows or millions of rows, you do not have to worry about it. BigQuery takes care of it. And once the model training is done, you can start doing prediction. You can call select star from ml.predict and do prediction on new data that's coming in to predict maybe uh, forecasting or maybe predict uh, new segments for your customers and so on. And so in summary, what does BigQuery ML really bring uh, as value to the table is you do not have to go hunt look for real advanced ML skills like Python and R. If uh, SQL is a much wider known language and users can use that to do ML. Second, you can execute all your ML workflows without moving data from BigQuery. Moving data is the biggest problem. Every AI problem becomes a data problem. And so by having to do it inside BigQuery, inside the database, it really takes away a big barrier to ML, uh, ML development and ML adoption. And finally, infrastructure. BigQuery takes advantage of the massive scale of Google's compute infrastructure and storage infrastructure to be able to not have to uh, think about what infrastructure you need to do ML. And that's powerful. Now, this is stuff that we've been doing since 2018. And so now we're going to launch a whole bunch of new capabilities that will just blow your mind. So let's start with MLOps. MLOps is critical for doing machine learning at enterprise scale. If you do not have MLOps, you know, you're training lots of models. You need to manage models. You need to compare models. How do you do all of that? M BigQuery ML is now tightly integrated with Vertex AI model registry. So any model that you create in BigQuery ML can be registered and monitored using Vertex AI's model registry. And once you can go, once you have the models available in Vertex AI, you can either deploy it, one-click deployment right inside Vertex AI to its online deployment endpoints, or you can do comparison and evaluation, 
or you can even do down the road monitoring and uh, a bunch of other capabilities that Vertex AI provides out of the box. And not only that, you will also have the ability to do explainable AI for models that were built with XAI capability. Another important piece of uh, uh, related to operationalizing is the ability to use pipelines. BigQuery ML has introduced more than 20 ML operators that will enable you to use those operators inside Vertex AI managed pipelines. Vertex AI managed pipelines is a KFP based, Kubeflow based pipelines that can be used by uh, organizations and professionals to make ML easier to manage. And with BigQuery ML, you can now do that right inside Vertex. And another cool thing about it is if you are a Python aficionado and not a SQL person, you can now use BigQuery ML operators to create your uh, BigQuery ML uh, uh, a train and uh, predict using BigQuery ML. So this is again going to open up more ways users can use and a tighter story between Vertex AI and BigQuery ML. Insights from unstructured data. This is the big news for us today. So far, BigQuery has, already, has always been a leader in managing structured and semi-structured data. Earlier today, Thomas Kurian announced that BigQuery can now handle unstructured data, such as images, text, docs, you name it. And what's the point of having all of the data if you cannot do something with it? So BigQuery ML will now help you unlock that value for the unstructured data that, that BigQuery will uh, help you manage. You can do model predictions with vision to figure out objects in an image by bringing in your own custom model, TensorFlow-based vision models to do object detection and a slew of other vision kind of capability. Down the road, we intend to unlock other kinds of capability beyond vision, and we look forward to making that available. But today, Candice is also going to show you a demo of this particular feature. Now, BigQuery ML already has support for many, many types of models. But a, a popular request from our customers is, hey, how can I do inference on models that I've already trained? I have a legacy system I want to train using that, or I built a model in another platform and I'd like to bring that in here. How can I do that? And so BigQuery ML will now be able to import models beyond TensorFlow. We already support TensorFlow import, and now we'll take it to TensorFlow Lite and XGBoost by typing a simple create or replace model and point to the model and you can bring the model in and then you can do the ml.predict just like you always do. And all the compute is being done inside BigQuery. Alternatively, if you've got a model that is too big or too large or it is already deployed at a endpoint and you do not have the ability to bring that into BigQuery, BigQuery ML will now have the ability to do inference on remote models. So if you have a model that is, you can deploy a model on Vertex AI or cloud functions, and then come to BigQuery and just point to it by saying create or replace model and point to that model endpoint. And then when you do ml.predict, the train, the prediction is going to take the data from BigQuery, take it all the way to the endpoint, do the prediction, bring the results back. You can also do evaluation of your model with that same uh, uh, remote model capability. So, all in all, inference on importing inference with imported models, the remote models will open up a whole range of other model types beyond the model types that BigQuery ML supports. Forecasting is a very important business problem. Customers want to predict what is my uh, future demand going to look like for a certain product, or what are future revenues going to look like for a certain uh, SKU. And BigQuery has natively supported Arima Plus, which is a, one of the most popular BigQuery ML models. And today, we are going to take that to the next level. Until now, we could only do forecasting with a single input variable. So if you have a revenue that you want to predict, you could only provide input as uh, input the past revenue along with the timestamp, and then it would predict the future revenue. Now, a, a common request from customers is that, hey, look, my revenue is impacted not just by past revenue, but I have other factors that impact that revenue. How can I bring that in? And that is basically multivariate time series forecasting, and we will start, you, you will have the ability to use Arima Plus XREG, which is Arima Plus with external regressors. So you can now provide additional features beyond just the target metric, like in this case, feature one, two, and three can be input along with the target metric to give you a forecasted target metric. So a lot more robust robustness to your forecasting because of these external regressors. I, uh, this is a very customer-centric feature, and I am so excited that the customers can now unlock more capability with forecasting. Feature engineering is at the heart of great machine learning. A lot of the time goes in feature engineering, taking the data and making it represented in a manner that the model training results in great models. And 
we already had fantastic support for various ML functions. And we are taking it to the next level today by introducing a host of new numerical and categorical functions here. Further, when you export BQML models, the transform clauses will also be exported along with them. So this is going to really simplify how you do online deployment with models that you've trained inside BigQuery. So as you can see, a lot of powerful capabilities are coming your way. The first two features are already GA and you're, you're welcome to use right away. The rest of the features are either coming in Q4 this year or early next year, and we can't wait, it, wait to get it in your hands and hear from you what you think about those. If you're interested in any of these, use the link presented at the bottom of this page to express your interest and we'll be in touch with you. Over to you, Candice, now to show us a super cool demo of how unstructured data and structured data can come together to uh, really uh, dramatically change how marketing analytics is done. So over to you, Candice. Thank you, Avinav. Today, I'd like to show you how Adsworf and Tweety are able to run SQL on their images and created machine learning models by using BigQuery ML. So Adsworf is a tech service provider that brings data, AI to data. And Tweety is one of the clients that they work with. It's a vacation rental company in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So if you go to Tweety's website today, you can find your dream vacation home. You can do search like how many bedrooms that you want to have, how close it is to the beach, whether it has an ocean view or not. And then they will generate a list of recommended vacation homes based on your criteria that come with these beautiful images that you saw in this photo. So as of today, 2D actually faced three major challenge that prevent them further improve their search results. The first one, they are relying mainly on structured data, which is the search data that they get from their users on the website to help them generate which properties they recommend to their users. And then secondly, their content team is mainly using a manual process to select the photos and edit the photos. And then lastly, even if they want to utilize those images, to be honest, it's pretty challenging to analyze those images using machine learning model, given the complexity of the work and the requirement on the data science skills. So how Tweety was able to tackle those challenge and go from using just structured data to be able to use both structured data and image data to predict the click-through rate of their rental properties. So now let's find out. Here are the steps that they took. Starting with, they have those images they already stored on GCS. So first step they took is to create an object ta table, which essentially points you to all of those house images that you stored on GCS. So this is actually a brand new capability that we are announcing today, which are super excited about, which means now you can access those unstructured data right inside BigQuery. And second step, they imported a vision model to help to generate image embeddings. What it does is to simply translate those image into a series of numbers, then you can use them as inputs for your machine learning models. So now you have your image embeddings, combine it with all of your business data from the website, you can start to build machine learning model and then make some predictions. So all of this you can do inside using SQL in BigQuery. So let me walk you through step by step. So the first one, they created an external model which essentially help you to point all of those images you have on GCS. As you can see in the output table on the right side, you can see each row represents an object stored on GCS. Now the table is created. You can just query the table just like any other tables right inside BigQuery. And the next step, they imported a vision model. In this case, they use a TensorFlow model called ImageNet to help to uh, generate the image embeddings. So once you have model in injected, you just use ml.predict to generate the image embeddings. In this case, they either even use the principal analysis to further reduce those embeddings down to 39 features. Then they can use for further analysis. And the next step, now you have your image embeddings in one table. You can combine it together with your search data. Then you combine them into one single table. So I think that's where we think the magic happened. So you can have everything structured, unstructured data all in one single place. You can view, analyze, and build machine learning on top of that. In this case, Tweety use a model called wide and deep for training and for prediction. 
Now we can finally use ML.predict to predict the click-through rate of the rental property listings. So on the right side, as you can see, the number highlighted represents the probability for a user to click those rental properties for the Twitty users. So now you wonder, so how can we understand these numbers and then what Twitty can do about it, right? So what they did was to use a function called global explain to help us understand all of those features that they use for the model, which of them can help us explain the final prediction numbers. So you can see a whole list uh, on the left side here. What we found that's really interesting is any feature that's related to the image, like principal component, which essentially the image embedding together with the image label help to represent 57% of the explanation reasons. So which is really high, much higher than Twitty and initially anticipated. And to also illustrate this further on the right side, you can see the average like, uh, probability of a user to click those images whenever those image labels were featured in a specific photo. So you can see the four quadrants here. And the top two quadrants, you can see if you include some water, swimming pool, beach, daytime, it's more likely to get more clicks from the users. So in the bottom quadrant, if you include elements like porch, stairway, it's probably not as impactful. So this is something Twitty should probably do less of. So now with this insights, they are ready to take it to the next level. So for the content team, now they can translate those findings and make better decisions for their photo editing and selection. So in this case, it's exact the same house in both two images. Initially, they used a nighttime photo, uh, but as you remember, the result is telling us from the machine learning model, our users are more likely to click the daytime photos. So now they have replaced it with a photo on the right side here, as you see. So to summarize what we learned so far from Twitty's use case. So with all of those great prediction results, now Twitty is able to make a more informed decision to do the A-B testing to help them improve their click-through rate. The content team can take a more data-driven approach when it comes to which photo to select, how to edit those photos to better engage with their users. And all of this, you can just use SQL, which aligns really well with their business analyst skills. And then lastly, I want to share with you a quote from Adsworth. Twitty now has the capability to use advanced image analysis to stay competitive in the ever-changing landscape of vacation rental providers, and then can do this using the in-house SQL skills. I want to thank Adsworth and uh, Twitty for sharing your feedback with us and looking forward to hearing more results from you. So for any of you who are interested to try out this feature or any BQML features that we share with you today, please use this interest form to sign up. We look forward to working closely with you. And thanks everyone for joining.